Welcome to Zigma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for agricultural science. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. If you don't have the application already installed on your device, I will want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. The exam guide is the leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, post-UTME, YAC, GCE, KCPE, IGMB, JPEB, Carbelpedia, BECE, JSCE, NCEE, NECO, to mention a few. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to be updated on new videos. Ready for today's class? Okay, let's get started. Okay, the government helps in many ways to improve agriculture in Nigeria. Most times, private agencies and corporate bodies also take up the responsibility of improving agriculture in Nigeria and the world at large. These agencies or corporate bodies are known as non-governmental organizations, popularly called NGO. So in this lesson, we will take a good look at the roles of non-governmental organizations in agricultural development. So our topic for today is roles of non-governmental organizations in agricultural development. And by the end of this lesson, you should be able to state the meaning of non-governmental organizations, should mention the characteristics of non-governmental organizations, highlight the roles of non-governmental organizations in agricultural development, and also outline the objectives of some non-governmental organizations, for example, IITA, WARDA. In the course of this class, we'll get to know the meaning of these acronyms. So let's start with the meaning of non-governmental organizations. What are non-governmental organizations? Now these are bodies set up by private agencies or corporate bodies in order to develop agriculture all over the globe. Let's take a look at the characteristics of non-governmental organizations. One, they are not owned or controlled by the government. That's why that word non, non-governmental. So you can see they are not owned or controlled by the government. They are also privately funded, so they are not funded by the government as well. And the activities cut across many countries. So they aim at developing improved species of crops and livestock across many countries. They are also non-profit making organizations, so they are not established to make profits. They also do not pay corporate taxes. That's a form of fee or levy that the government expects individuals or organizations to pay. But these non-governmental organizations do not pay corporate taxes. Let's take a look at the rules of non-governmental organizations. We are going to look at these rules in four, the rules are covered in four categories. We have capacity building. So non-governmental organizations ensure that farmers' capacity, that their production level is stepped up, the knowledge and the technical know-how they need to have in order to boost production is stepped up or increased or improved upon. Extension services are also provided or specialists or extension officers are trained right, in order to carry out new research information to the farmers, which is connected to the next point, which is provision of research information and also the provision of basic amenities like pipe on water, roads and clinics. So these are the, basically the rules of non-governmental organizations. Now let's take a look at the non-governmental organizations that are involved in improving agriculture. We have quite a number of them, and I'll just mention some of them that are 
quite popular. We have the International Institute for Tropical Agriculture, IITA, West African Rice Development Agency, WARDA. Now, remember when I talked about the specific objectives, I mentioned IITA and WARDA. So now we know the meaning of IITA, which is International Institute for Tropical Agriculture, WARDA, which is West African Rice Development Agency. We also have ILCA, which is International Livestock Center for Africa, the Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, International Crop Research Institute for Semi-Arid Tropics, ICRISAT, ICRISAT. We also have Cassava Enterprise Development Project, CEDP, Live Above Poverty, LAP, Micro Project Programs, MPP, International Center for Research in Agroforestry. We also have International Livestock Research Institute. We have Equa Rural Development, World Vision International, located in Ghana, Hunger Project, also located in Ghana, Action Aid, Adventist Relief Agency. Catholic Relief Service Organization in Gambia, and we also have the International Fund for Agricultural Development. Now, let's look at the ways NGOs have contributed to agricultural development. They've contributed in so many ways, so we're going to take a look at the ways, the numerous ways in which these NGOs have contributed to the development of agriculture. First and foremost, we can see that they assist in rural development. And how is this done? By helping to provide social or basic amenities like road, healthcare centers, pipe-borne water, electricity. They also help to carry out research in order to improve or to develop new crop varieties because this is very essential for agricultural development in order to improve or meet up with the demand for food globally. They also help to carry out research to improve or develop new breeds of animals. So it's not just about crop improvement. They also get involved in animal improvement to ensure that we have better um, animal byproducts, milk, eggs, meat, hides and skin from our animals. They also help to provide financial support for agricultural projects. Remember agriculture? is capital intensive, intensive, and so these NGOs also help to provide financial support for agricultural projects. They also help to improve farmers' awareness and agricultural knowledge, and this is achieved through extension services. So you can see that extension services are very important, both for, this is also achieved when we talked about um, programs established by the federal government. They also help to provide, some of those programs also cover the aspect of extension services. Likewise, NGOs too, they are also involved in providing good extension services to our farmers. They also help to carry out socioeconomic research to understand the peasant farmers or the rural farmers with a view of assisting them because they are faced with challenges and if this, um, Farmers have these challenges that need to be solved, and so these NGOs help to come close to these farmers and try to understand them so that they can help solve their challenges and their problems. They also help to fund research for better farming methods. Now, researches need to be carried out in order to improve the methods of farming in agriculture, and so these NGOs provide the funds needed to help better farming to, or to help develop better farming methods and also develop better farm implements as well. They also help to control the production of pest resistant varieties of crops. Now pests is a major challenge in agricultural production that can lead to heavy losses and so these NGOs step in to help produce pest-resistant varieties of crops. 
they also step in to also help to produce disease resistant varieties of crops not only pests serves or poses a major challenge in agricultural production diseases also lead to heavy economic losses and so these NGOs also step in to help to provide solution by helping to produce disease resistant varieties of crops they also help to develop appropriate farming systems and this farming system could include mixed farming, crop rotation, you know, tonga farming, different farming systems which the NGOs have helped to develop to encourage or to help step up agricultural production. Let's take a look at some of the objective of some non-governmental organizations. Remember earlier on I mentioned the some non-governmental organizations. So at this point, we're going to look at some objectives or the objectives of some of the non-governmental organizations. Let's start with WADA, W-A-R-D-A, which is West African Rice Development Agency. And what is the objective of this agency? One is to promote the cultivation of rice. You know, rice is a staple food, is a major food, both locally and globally staple food so this agency was set up to promote the cultivation of rice to also develop species with high yield high quality disease resistance and also to meet the nutritional needs of the west african sub region we have iita which is international institute of tropical agriculture iita some of us may be familiar with this Institute. Now, the aim of this institute is to promote the cultivation of food crops generally, all food crops, to also develop high yielding food crops, which is important to meet the need, the food demands of the country. So, IATA was established to develop high yielding food crops and also to develop food crops that are disease resistant. Remember, this is a major challenge in crop production or in agriculture generally. So one of the key solutions to this problem is to develop disease resistant food crops and IATA is working hard or has helped to achieve this. They also help to develop food crops that can adapt to the climate of tropical countries. Now when we're talking about tropical countries, we're talking of countries with high temperature. And so IATA has stepped in to help develop food crops that can adapt to this extreme temperature, which is observed in um, tropical countries, like Nigeria is a tropical country. And so they also help to improve the method of processing our food crops too, to make it more palatable for human consumption. They also help to encourage local farmers to grow crops that have been improved by the institutes. This is where extension officers also come in too. So after they have developed these crops, they need to get these improved varieties of crops to the farmers. So they encourage local farmers to grow the crops that have been improved by the institute. We have another non-governmental organization called ILCA, which is International Livestock Center for Africa. And what are the objectives of the International Livestock Center for Africa? One is to promote the rearing of animals, to encourage farmers to rear animals, to also breed animals with high production capabilities in terms of milk, meat, egg, height, and skin, you know, including offspring too, the young ones that are produced, to encourage us to breed animals that can produce high quality products. So products here, we're looking at the byproducts, their milk, the egg, the meat, and so on, hides and skin as well. To breed animals that can adapt to the African climate and environment. You know, the African climate and environment is, is a tropical climate, which is kind of harsh, you know, because of the high temperature we do experience. So these animals, the International Livestock Center has developed uh, animals that or bred animals that can adapt to the African climate and environment. We have um, the International Crop Research Institute for Semi-Arid Tropics, which is ICRISAT, 
ICRISAT. And what are the aims of ICRISAT? Is to promote the cultivation of selected crops in the semi arid regions. And when we talk about the semi arid regions, we're talking of regions that have low rainfall. And they also help to develop crops which can adapt to dry regions of Africa. So that is what the International Crop Research Institute for Semi-Arid Tropics does. They also help to develop irrigation systems that will promote the cultivation of crops in the dry regions. Remember, farming should take place all season, during the rainy season, during the dry season, in order to meet up with the demand for food. And irrigation is one of the ways to achieve this. And so ICRISAT, which is the International Crop Research Institute for Semi-Arid Tropics, has helped to achieve this, and they are also involved in helping to produce crops in abundance. Okay, so we've taken note of um, some of the, the meaning of NGOs and some of the objectives of the NGOs, but in the course of this lesson, we looked at the meaning of NGOs as stated, which is a non-profit making organization that helps to promote agricultural development through capacity building, extension services, research and funding. And we also looked at the characteristics of NGOs, which include, one, they are not owned or controlled by the government. They are privately funded. The activities cuts across many countries, you understand, and they, with the aim of improving species of crops and livestock breeds. They are also non-profit making organizations. They are not established to make profit. They also do not pay corporate tax. And I said, we also looked at their roles of NGOs and we said capacity building is one of the roles to help improve the farmer's ability to step up their level of production. Also extension services to ensure that information is reached to the farmers whenever new there's some development in agriculture or new discoveries and new innovations. These are passed across to the farmers. And also the provision of basic amenities like pipe on water, roads, health centers. And we also looked at the contributions of NGOs in agriculture, which include assisting in rural development, how by providing social amenities and also carrying out research to develop new crops and breeds of animals and also the provision of financial support for agricultural products, etc. just to mention a few. Let's take a look at some questions using our exam guide. This question says, an agricultural extension officer should be able to A, create new jobs for farmers, B, raise funds for farmers, C, cultivate a large farm, and D, guide and educate farmers. So from what I taught you, you should know that the correct answer here should be to guide and educate farmers on new innovations that have been discovered. So the answer is D. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also has other features that make learning fun. It is a must have for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com com if you don't have it yet see you in the next class don't forget to subscribe to our channel hit the notification bell and share the video to people that would benefit from it